There aren't a huge amount of echo chambers around no. anymore. I mean, we, we've got one. There used to be three. We've got one left. Yeah. Um, oh, there we go. I've hit something already. Um, this room's kind of interesting, actually. I've, I've seen people. I've um, seen Paul McCartney do drums in here once. Actually. Okay. <laughs> Which was like I'd never seen it done before, but. Um, we were recording um, Memory Almost Full, I was the assistant engineer on that mm -hmm. album, and, and, and Paul was like, you know, I want to record drums in here, and I was like, okay, we can, <laughs> I, think, I think we can do that. Why not? Um, so we kind of dragged the mics in here and the microphone leads and all that sort of stuff, and uh, it, it's I mean, just fairly brash, you know, yeah. and kind of cool, but the problem is, like, that just goes straight onto a neighbor's garden, so right. within like Brilliant. minutes, within minutes, security. Didn't appreciate that. Like getting com you know, oh complaints from the neighbors. You'd like, think if you live next to Abbey Road that yeah, you'd be used to yeah, having some yeah. sound occasionally. So we try not to record in here too much, but it was kind of, I was a bit, you know, it's a bit nerve wracking to ask Paul to stop playing drums, but um, right. he got the take and it was, it was fine. But um, yeah, you know, it's, re we record anywhere at Abbey Road, you know, be creative with space, Wherever you need to. Okay, stuff. so yeah. this is it here? Uh, this is the chamber, yeah, at the okay. back here. What is, how many second reverb is in here typically? Oh, this is like zero point something or a bit yeah. short. Yeah, yeah. short. Um, but you know, we, we, we take digital reverbs for granted now. You yep. can have any space you want. But back in the 50s, you know, if you wanted to change the sound of your recording acoustically, the only way to do that was to actually take that recording and play it into another room and pick it up again, you know, play it for a speaker and pick it up with some microphones. Okay, so would you play, would they play it through one speaker or yeah, two speakers? Yeah, so it'd be one speaker, generally where that speaker is now, sort of in the corner, so the sound would kind of hit the walls, bounce, bounce around back. the room. These are here to diffuse the sound. Diffuse these are, the these sound. are sewer pipes, yep. right? Yep. Um, and, Ceramic. And then two microphones at the back, well it'd be one microphone originally, but no, okay. now two microphones at the back. Uh, the, I mean, it's this. But really, two microphones, it's not really in stereo anyways. No, it's kind of, yeah, a mishmash <laughs> of yeah, reflections. But um, it's, it's, it's the bathroom, effectively. Like, it's you know, a bathroom, That, that yeah. thing where people sing in the bathroom because right. it sounds good, you know, it's a, it's an, it's a bathroom. Um, but yeah, I mean, so the chambers were um, built in the early 50s um, by um, um, one of the uh, recording engineers. Is this here. an add-on? This looks like it's part of the original building. I think this used to be an air raid shelter. Okay. Or it was where the air raid shelter was. Okay. This is where they, they built the echo chamber. But yeah, Studio One, Studio Two, Studio Three, each had an echo chamber. This is the only one that's still here. Um, but then EMT plates came along in the late 50s, like 57. Yeah. Um, and I mean, again, we take this sort of thing for granted, but that was the first time recording engineers could actually change the the reverb the, time. That's right. You just hold a button down and get bigger or smaller. They must be mind blowing. They must have freaked out. Yeah, yeah, because you can't do that with bricks and mortar. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so the, but the, the chamber continued to be used. Is um, this the only chamber in Abbey Road? It's the only one left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, did every did every studio have a chamber originally? Or yeah, not? Studio One's echo chamber still exists, but ironically, it holds the plate reverbs. Okay. So you can't really use it as an echo chamber. And anymore. how many plate reverbs are there? We've got four here. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they are they all in that room? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're all in that room. But they're all they all go to every studio. Yeah. So we've got like a central patch room in the building. Okay. What if two people want to use a a, a plate at the same time? Fight in the corridor. I, I, you book it out. That's the, I learned that right? lesson the hard way when I first started here. You book. Like, what am I hearing out. on that? Yeah. Um, actually, there <laughs> there have been instances where you kind of. Because you can patch this echo chamber into any of the other rooms. Okay. I do remember times when we were mixing in Studio 3 using this echo chamber, and if you turn the volume up, you could hear a band like basically next door, and it's all bleeding in here. It's like, <laughs> okay, just keep that down a bit. But you know, that's, that's bricks and mortar, isn't it? You know? Now remember, you can use any empty room. It doesn't even have to be empty. It just has to have some hard surfaces and no flutter echoes. The next thing we're going to do is move in a speaker and a microphone because we are going to mic the sound of the room after we send sound through the speaker. Okay, so they're setting up. We got Ken and we have Billy. The next thing we're going to do is bring in the microphone. So this microphone, this is just a, let's bring it in here, Billy. This is a Neumann KM184, nice, decent condenser mic. I'll put it up about this high or so. We got the speaker here. It's probably about uh, 10 to 12 feet away or so. You can hear. This is a huge reverb here. Let's check out what it sounds like. Okay, so I have my laptop set up here. I brought up a session. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna play the Pro Tools tracks through the speaker, 
and just to make sure things are working. That's a Soundgarden song, Burden in My Hand, so that's actually Matt Cameron. We, it's great that we actually have a great drummer to demo our reverb, but you can already hear just from this distance that that room has a great reverb. Once we close the doors though, you're really gonna hear it. I'm just gonna send the snare through it and let's hear what that sounds like. Here we go. That's a huge snare reverb. I'd like to take a second to talk to you about this channel. This is actually Rick Beato too. I've had it since the beginning of my main channel and many of you are not subscribed. As a matter of fact, 87% of the people that watch this channel regularly are not subscribed. So I encourage you to hit the subscribe button on this channel and on my main channel. This will help me get even more of my dream guests and help continue to grow both channels. Thank you. Next, we're going to put the acoustic guitar, or it really sounds like a dobro, through it and hear what it sounds like. Let's check it out. this room that it sounds great. Imagine what it sounds like in there. Next, let's listen to the vocals. Check out the sound of the heavy guitars when they come in, just bleeding through the door in the kitchen. Let's catch part of the chorus with the reverb on and off. Take a speaker, run your sound out through it, put a mic in the room, and record it back in. It's that simple. If you don't have money for plugins, you can do it the old school way.